Hello and welcome to my triangle strategy review. So in this review, well in this video, I'm going to be reviewing the game and what I think about the game and do I recommend the game. So if you follow this channel, you'll probably know that I'm going to recommend the game because I've done over 80 videos on the game. Um, and most of these I feel like aren't like filler videos. I cover a bunch of different things because there's a lot of depth to this game, uh, but some background on my experience with the game. I have over 350 hours. I've completed hard mode uh, six times. I'm halfway through seventh completion. Uh, I'm also halfway through a hard mode fresh save on Deathless where no one's allowed to die. So I'm pretty close to completing it eight times, maybe nine times, if I just beat a few missions. Uh, but overall, I would say this is a great game with a lot of features. There's a lot you can do in the game. So you can see here, I have this unit, Anna, she's an assassin. So even though she's an assassin that can do dagger attacks, she can also throw items. So if I want to start throwing some like ice stones at some of these mages, I can do that. And the game will allow it. I can also throw these like lightning stones. So even though she's an assassin, she has some options because she can do two things a turn that's unique to her class. So she can throw two damaging items a turn or she can attack with two dagger attacks. So there's a lot of interesting things in the game. So for example, with Milo, uh, she can jump, she can move and then jump again. So she can actually, she can move and then she can jump to move a second time and then she can act after that. So she can straight up do something like this. She can jump over to here and then she can heart steal her. So she'll have an 80% chance to flip this enemy and turn him, to, turn him into an ally using temp. So now he's on our, he's on our team for two turns and enemies will actually attack him. So she's effectively crowd controlled that enemy. Uh, we can have this old lady, Grama, pop down here and throw some ice on these dudes. And then we can have Piccoletta drop a decoy. So this is a unit that can create a clone of herself. She can throw items very far, so she can put down a clone that enemies will attack. So th there's a lot of like unit variety. There's a lot of interesting things each unit can do. So one of the main reasons I would recommend this game is if you like min-maxing and experimenting and trying out different things, this game has 30 playable units, and in general, you will be running 8 to 12, depending on what map it is. So you have a lot of opportunities to try to like try different strategies and just kind of like mess around with the game and have fun. So I think if you are a fan of Fire Emblem, you will generally enjoy this game. This has a lot of similarities to Three Houses in the team building aspect, um, the leveling aspect, like things cap at level 50. So unlike in Fire Emblem, where like three houses especially where you can just keep leveling there will eventually be a cap but the game is actually balanced around that uh, there is a hard mode there's also a secret difficulty that's pretty fun called deathless where if you don't let any green or blue unit that's an ally die throughout an entire playthrough meaning that not a single thing dies you get an item and so this is like a hidden difficulty called deathless mode so that's kind of cool Another thing I like about this game is orientation. So if you actually look here, when you end a turn, you can choose which direction you face. The reason this matters is if you get hit in the back, you take automatic crits and enemies have increased accuracy while attacking in the back. So if you get hit from the front, you take the least amount of damage. If you get hit from the sides, it has increased accuracy. And then hits to the back have even more increased accuracy and will always crit. So generally, orientation and position really matters. So if you're a huge fan of Fire Emblem, especially like Three Houses, the the fact that this is a game that's just almost exactly like that, like, like I can't recommend it enough, you'll basically, I can almost guarantee you'd enjoy it. It's a really fun game. If you enjoy Three Houses and you like the mechanics of moving like the units and doing all these different abilities and coming up with team strategies, you'll enjoy this as well. Uh, so there's those points. Another thing is height matters. So you can see here some of my units are on high ground. So in the game, the higher you are, the more damage you deal when you attack down, and the more accuracy you have. And on the opposite end of things, if you are low in elevation and attacking up, you have less accuracy and deal less damage. So it's extremely useful to be able to, to have a high ground in this game, more so than uh, in Fire Emblem where it doesn't do anything unless there's like a, a specific tile that actually will help you. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get I'm going to set up a back attack. So Anna can act twice. So I'm going to do a big attack on this on this uh, blade dude. It'll debuff him, 
easy crits, and then I can kill him. And more enemies are spawning in. This is a challenge mission. There's also this quietus system, so it's similar to Divine Pulse, except it has more utility and flexibility. So instead of just resetting turns, you have, you know, restore health to something, give something the diamonds that you use to activate abilities, have an ally's turn move after yours. This allows you to set things up. So there's a lot of depth to this game that players who like to speedrun or to like low turn count Fire Emblem will enjoy because there are a lot of like speedrun tactics that can be employed. There's also some characters that are really good specifically for this. So it definitely has a lot of depth. It has a lot of uh, interesting characters that all do different things. Uh, there's also a lot of viable team compositions. So right now I'm running a team that doesn't really use utilities, which are like units that improve your team's effectiveness. These Most of these units just kill things or just shut them down. So you can pretty much run whatever you feel like in this game. It's completely up to you as the player to determine what team composition you actually want to use. All right, so let's get Milo out of here so we can moon jump away as well as two enemies and then have her run towards the team, just like get her out of danger. So that's an example of Milo. And then you have Huet, who's like an archer on a bird who can shoot extremely far, as you can see here. And then she can also spike a target down using Shooting Star. So check that out. That's pretty cool. It's like a big spike. She just flies on top of things and shoots them with an arrow. Pretty pretty fun. Pretty cool. Um, so the game also has huge replay value. There's a, essentially four endings. And they're, and they're not like endings where, like in Mass Effect 3, like it's like different colored everyone it's like it's like a blue or a green or a red laser and everyone dies the endings are actually drastically different and they completely change the way like the game is so like the endings are all drastically different the lead up to those endings is different but there's also different branches in the storyline in general so there's parts where you can like chapter eight for example there's four different chapter eights so you like depending on which route you choose depending on how you convince people for voting, so that's essentially what the scales of conviction thing is, it's voting, you can have one of four maps. And most maps have either there's one or two, like you have like like a chapter seven has one or two. I don't know if this is correct, but just for an example, there'll be like chapter seven A, chapter seven B, and then some have an A, B, C, and D. So most maps, there's very few maps where there's just one version of it. Most maps have like forks or like splits where there's like four maps or there's two maps. So this game has huge replay value. And then also when you beat the game and do New Game Plus, what you can do is you actually get to keep all of your units on New Game Plus, And the game actually gets harder instead of easier. So you're allowed to experiment more because you keep all your units. You can try out more things. Uh, it really just opens itself up to you in this way. So I would say it's pretty fun overall. Definitely worth trying out uh, because you have a lot of team compositions. You can do a lot of experimenting. You can do a bunch of different replays, like huge replay value because of all the potential um unit combinations and then you can you, you keep the units you unlock so you get to choose how you use them um okay there's also the hidden secret difficulty i went over that i'm going off of a list if you're curious uh the other thing i really like about, like about this game is the environment matters so if you look at this you see the snow it says movement cost 1.2 uh, what that effectively means is it reduces your movement by one so if you can move five now you can only move four so you can see here this unit whose normal movement is five is reduced by one because of the snow. So there's all these environmental effects. There's also weather effects. Uh, if, it, if it's windy, archers won't be as accurate. Um, if it's raining, I think that affects some things, but it creates puddles, which reduce movement, especially all like on the earth, you know, because it makes mud. So that actually makes sense. But there's, there's a lot of things like that in this game. You can see here I can hit this guy really far away with a huge ability for, for some chip damage there. But a lot of the things matter, like your positioning, the environment, the weather. Uh, it's all it's all really fun, and it and it feels like uh, kind of like a war simulator type game. And that's not like super realistic, obviously, because it's a JRPG, but it's pretty good. All right, I, I highly recommend it. I think it's fun. We can throw this decoy down here to give him something to attack. So you can see there, I'm kind of using these decoys as like a lightning rod for my team, and then I can have Anna. Do some, oh wait, we got some resistances. We'll hit some weaknesses instead. So we can actually hit two of these archers. So she can throw elemental stones as well as hit with dagger attacks. So she has some flexibility in that in this way. 
I mean, anyone can use elemental stones, so, like, that's the thing you can do. Anyone can spam them, <laughs> which is nice because they're pretty good. So, here, let's see if we can get... Let's see. I guess Grama can use another one as well. Killing some of these. Yeah, we're just nuking them down. Now, I could run mages, too, to nuke these instead, but this is more fun, so we'll do that. <laughs> but that's just an example of, like, the different team comps you can run. Uh, but overall, definitely a really good game. Definitely really fun. You can see here, I can turn on this. You, you see these numbers. This is the turn order. So you, instead of looking at the thing at the very bottom where it shows the turn order, you can just hit Y when you're on an empty tile. And you can see, like, okay, this guy's going to be a turn 6. This guy's a turn 4. So then you can, you can calculate out, okay, uh, if Anna is at half health and then turn 6 hits her and then turn 4 stabs over him because uh, spear guys can stab up to two squares away, then she could potentially die. So then I'd want to make sure she catches a heal, for example. So there's a lot of like in like like you know, turn to turn strategies, and then like obviously I, like we have a long term plan of nuking these down and trying to waste their turns and distract them to kill them while holding the high ground, and uh, just like healing people, keeping them alive, and shutting these enemies down with shutdown abilities. But there's a lot of uh, different strategies that work. You can just run straight up damage. You can just cause all the enemies to become infuriated and attack a tank. There's a whole bunch of different things you can do, and they're all pretty fun, to be honest. And a lot of it is pretty skill-based. This isn't an RNG-heavy game. Uh, most of the effects that you're going to be relying on have proc rates of 70 to 80 percent, which is pretty good. Most attacks are fairly, fairly accurate. Magic never misses. Uh, throwing stones never misses. So if I have Milo come over and throw a stone, uh, it can't miss. So in fact, what she can do, she can come down to here and hit all three of these. Killing two of them. But you can see there, like, we're forcing them to wrap around us. And then I can have Roland hop down here if I wanted. And use, like, Flash of Steel or something. So you can stab through an ally that's body blocking in this case. And then they're going to attack that decoy because its defensive stats are low. And the AI loves to prioritize those. And then if we want to do something fun, we can take Giovanna uh, and Light Wave her down here. And she has a crazy attack that hits extremely far away. So let's see. Yeah, this attack. You can see here it'll hit two of them. And then she can just kind of like run back. So there's a lot of different things you can do. Uh, you can also push enemies off of high ground. There's like traps. There's all these different types of builds that are fun to run. So I can't recommend this game enough. Uh, but if you enjoyed this video and you thought this was useful, definitely like and subscribe. Uh, if you are curious about this game and want to start playing it, I also have guides for literally every unit and also general strategy guides and things where I cover like concepts in the game. So I have quite a lot on this channel alone. I am going to be covering other, other games though. This isn't the only game I'm going to cover. Uh, but yeah, thanks for checking this out and I'll see you in the next video.